Okay, so for question number one, okay, the answer is summation QI times MI over summation QI, which is uh, QI is uh, abundance, okay, peratus kelimpahan 13 times 30 plus 14 times 50 plus 15.5 times 20 over 100. Okay, so the answer is uh, 14U, okay, so first answer is B, okay, 14U. Alright, next. Okay, so the table below contain information extract from the mass spectrum of neon. Okay, so if given the relative atomic mass of neon is 20.18, so determine the value of x and y in the table above. Okay, so untuk uh, kita cari nilai x dan y, okay, so total, okay, total abundance kita adalah, okay, 19.9 plus x plus y is equal to 100. Okay, so 20 times 19.9 plus 21 times x plus 22 times y over 100. Okay, so kita dapat di sini. Okay, the answer is okay, first equation 200 okay, if equal to 21 x plus 22 y then satu lagi equation is 100 times 100 equal to 90 okay, 90.9 okay, plus x plus y okay so x is equal to 100 minus 90.9 minus y so kita substitute 3 in 1 okay kita gantikan 3 ke dalam 1 so kita dapat di sini okay y is equal to 8.9 and then x kita dapat 0.2 so the answer is b okay so number 2 is b okay next an organic compound, okay, an organic compound of Z contains only the element, okay, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Jadi, bila kita ada 0.4 gram of Z is completely burned in excess oxygen, 0.144 grams of water and 0.469 grams of carbon dioxide are produced. Untuk soalan ni, okay, kita kena cari apa dahulu? Okay, kita kena cari mass of carbon dan juga mass of hydrogen. Okay, carbon di dalam carbon dioxide, hydrogen di dalam water dan juga oksigen di dalam zat. Okay, so uh, untuk carbon dioxide ialah carbon di dalam carbon dioxide is 12 over 44. Okay, so 12 ni di sini adalah mass of carbon over carbon dioxide times 0.496. Okay, so this one ialah uh, 469. Okay, ini adalah GCM carbon dioxide dan this one adalah gisim water so this one adalah gisim oxygen jadi untuk gisim oxygen kita tolak saja 0.4 tolak 0.128 tambah 0.016 jadi kita dapat 0.256 grams ok jadi gisim carbon hydrogen and oxygen ni bila kita dah dapat gisim tiga tiga ni kita masuk dekat dalam table untuk kita cari apa empirical formula ok so 0.128 grams 0.016 gram 0.256 gram so kita bagi dengan molar mass ok divide by 12 divide by 1 divide by 16 dan kita akan dapat ratio dia adalah 0.0107 so cari simplest ratio ok find the simplest ratio so kita dapat C2H3O3 so the answer is C ok alright so C is question number 3 ok alright so Next question, okay, kita tengok soalan nombor 4. Okay, question number 4. Okay, a bottle of concentrated nitric acid, okay, has a level of 80% by mass and the density of 0.8362 gram per milliliter. Calculate the molality of the solution. Okay, so walaupun dia bagi, okay, even though you have the density di sini, okay, mula sekali kita assume the mass of HNO3. Okay. Kita assume 100 gram. Jadi, persen by mass sama dengan mass of HNO3 solute over mass of HNO3 solution darab 100% which is 83%. So, kita dah dapat mass dia okay, sama dengan 85 gram. Jadi, mass of solvent kita, kita tolak sahaja. Okay, iaitu, kita assume tadi 100 gram. Kemudian, kita tolak 85 gram. So, kita dapat 15 grams. 15 grams of solvent solvent uh, Nitric acid ni kita tukar pergi kilogram sama dengan 0.015 kilogram. Jadi dah dapat dia punya 
mass of solvent. Jadi, yang ini adalah bilangan mol. Jadi, bilangan mol 85 bahagi dengan molar mass 1.35 mol. So, carilah molarity iaitu mol per kg. Okay, kita ada 1.35 mol over 0.015 kg. Jadi, kita dapat 85.95 molal. Okay, so the answer is D. Okay, right. Next. Okay, next is question number 5. Okay, alright. Untuk question number 5, okay, kita ada 5 gram of toluene. Okay, toluene sebagai solute. Okay. Toluene sebagai solute di sini dan benzin sebagai solvent. Okay, which of the statement is all are correct? The solution contains 0.054 mol of solute toluene. So kita cari bilangan mol toluene. Yes, kita dapat 0.054. The molality of solution calculate is 0.24 mol per kilogram. 0.054 over 0.225 kilogram. So kita dapat 0.241 molal. Yes, this is correct. The molarity of solution is calculate 0.3 mol per liter. So, this one is wrong because kita tak tahu berapakah volume of the solution. So, we cannot find the molarity of the solution. So, the most correct answer is only 1 and 2. Okay, right. So, next. A titration is carried out between dichromate ion CR2O7 to minus and Fe2. Okay, Fe2 plus dalam acidic medium. Determine the number of mole electron involved in the complete redox reaction in the above titration. So, mula-mula sekali kita kena tengok dahulu. Kita ada 4, uh, Cr2O7. So, Cr2O7 to minus. Dia akan produce 2 Cr3 plus. Okay, Cr2 jadi 2 Cr3 plus. And then, 7 OH, okay. OH kita buat 7H2O. 7H2O ada 14H+. Okay. Jadi kalau kita kira dekat sini, charge dia adalah negatif. Okay. Di sini adalah positif 12. So kalau kat kiri positif 12, kanan positif 6. Jadi kita kena tambah 6 elektron. Okay. Uh, sorry, kita kena tambah 2 elektron. Okay, sekejap, eh. This one is positive 12 minus 2, positive 40 minus 2. Okay, so kita dapat positive 12. Okay, this one is positive 6. Okay, 2 times 3, positive 6. Jadi, kat sini kita kena tambah. Okay, this one tak perlu darat 3. Okay, so this one kita ada 6 elektron. Okay, we have 2 elektron. And then, dekat sini kita ada 1. Okay, uh, this one kita tambah 1E. Okay, kita tambah 1E. Jadi, dekat sini kita ada 1E. Ke atas kita ada 6. Jadi, kita nak equalize the electron. Okay, so this one 6 electron. Dia involve 6 electron. So, the answer is C. Okay. Alright, next. Determine the mass of zinc as strong in a ratio between 0 0.1 and 8 grams of impure zinc with excess nitric acid. Assume the process is 90.4% effective. Jadi kalau 90.4% effective, ini adalah dia punya uh, percentage yield. Okay. Jadi kita gunakan mass of uh, mass of zinc daripada eksperimen over theoretical. Okay. Actual over theoretical. Jadi theoretical kita okay, uh, 0 0.1 and 9.8 ataupun uh, this one impure. Uh, impure. So, darab 100%. So, kita darab 90.4% darab 0.198. So, kita dapat 0.178 grams. Jadi, jawapan dia adalah A. Okay. Alright. Next. Nombor 8. Which of the following contain the greatest number of molecules? Dikira satu-satulah. Okay. So, water 1 over 18. Okay. Kita dapat 0.0556. Okay, oxygen 1 over 32, kita dapat 0.03125. Then ozone O3, 1 over 6, 16 times 3, 48, 0.0208 mol. And then carbon dioxide 1 over 44. So, kita dapat 0.0227 mol. Jadi, yang paling banyak adalah A, okay, iaitu 0.0556. Okay. Right, next. 
calculate the energy change for the formation of line with the lowest energy in passion series. Jadi kalau untuk passion series, okay, passion maksudnya ground state dia adalah tiga, okay, Lyman, okay, we have Lyman, Balmer, okay, passion bracket fun. Jadi passion terletak pada ground state sama dengan tiga. Jadi kalau first line adalah empat pergi ke tiga, okay. 4 drops to 3. So, gantikan saja dekat dalam formula. Delta E is equal to 2.18 exponent negative 18 joule. Okay. Darab 1 over N1 square minus 1 over N2 square. So, kita dapat 1.06 exponent negative 19 joule. Okay. So, uh, this one kita gunakan RH 2.18 because kita nak cari apa ni? Kita nak cari delta E energy. Okay, kalau kita nak cari lambda, kita gunakan 1.097. So, the formula is the same. Okay, formula ni sama aja. Cuma kita kena perkenal pasti RH mana yang kita nak pakai. Okay, alright. So, that's for question number 9. Eh? Question 9. Okay, question 10. What is the energy of photon associated with radiation which has a frequency of 3.818 exponent 15 hertz? Jadi, uh, this one adalah frekuensi. Jadi formula that relates frekuensi dengan delta E adalah delta E is equal to H times frekuensi. H adalah 6.63 exponent negative 34. Frekuensi 3.818 exponent 15. So kita dapat 2.53 exponent negative 18 joule. So the answer is B. Number 10. Okay, question number 11. Calculate the frequency of the first line in the Lyman series. Jadi Lyman, okay, ground state for Lyman adalah N sama dengan 1. Jadi kalau first line 2 dengan 1. Okay. So nak cari delta delta E dahulu sebab kita dah dapat delta E baru boleh kita cari frekuensi. Jadi kita dapat delta E kita sama dengan 1.635 eksponen negatif 18 joule. Lepas tu darabkan dengan uh, delta E is equal to H times frequency. Frequency is equal to delta E over H. So, kita dapat 2.47 exponent 15 hertz. Okay. As negative 1. So, the answer is A. <coughs> okay. Question 15. Calculate the wavelength produced when an electron in hydrogen atom is transferred from N is equal to 6 to N is equal to 2. Jadi, drops daripada 6 pergi ke 2. Okay. So, bila the drops pergi 6 sama dengan 2, kita nak cari wavelength. So, formula dia adalah 1 over lambda equal to RH times 1 over N1 square minus 1 over N2 square. Okay. Jadi, transfer the uh, substitute all the value. RH kita kena pakai 1.097 sebab Ini adalah RH untuk kira lambda. Okay. Kalau 2.18 untuk cari delta E. So, substitute all the value and then you akan dapat lambda is equal to 4.102 exponent negative 7 meter. So, the answer is A. Okay, next. The molecule with molecular geometry of square planar. Okay, square planar AB4. Okay, AB4. Carbon oxide. Carbon oxide AB2, linear. Okay, jadi bukan CCL4. CCL4 is AB... Sorry, square planar is AB4E2. Okay, AB4E2. Okay. CCL4 is AB4. AB4 is tetrahedral. Jadi tetrahedral bukan. XEF4, xenon kumpulan 18. Jadi dia ada 8 valence electron. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 4 makes a bonding with fluorine. And then another 2 lone pair. AB4, E2. So, uh, XEF4 is square planar. Okay, so kita tengok. Kalau kita buat XEF2. Kasih F2, kita ada 3. Jadi, 3 long pair, 2 bonding pair, A, B, 2, E, 3. It is a linear. So, this is not the answer. So, C lah. Okay. Um, 13 C.
Next. Okay, question 14. BF3, boron trifluoride molecule known to have a trigonal planar based on the VCPR. The orbital diagram of B in the excited or promoted state. Okay. Jadi kalau boron ground state, okay, 2S2, 2P1. Dia group 13. Ha? Dia ada 3 valence electron. Jadi bila dia excite, dia perlu promote satu electron pergi okay, the orbital 2P. Jadi kita akan dapat apa ni? 2S, 2P. Okay. So, the most correct answer ialah B. Okay, next. Question 15. The Lewis structure of methanoic acid. Jadi, methanoic acid ni, okay, this one suppose dia ada long pair for hydrogen. Okay. Alright. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, tengok dekat sini. Saya dah lukis. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, carbon atom is surrounded by four bonding pair electron. Yes, correct. Carbon atom needs four unpaired electron to form three sigma bond and one lone pair. One, two, three sigma, one lone pair. Yes, this is correct. The unhybridized p orbital used, okay, for the formation of pi bond. Yes, correct. Jadi jawapan dia one, two, and three. Okay, all are correct. Okay, so the answer is D. Donkey. Next, question number 19. Sorry, question number 16. The boiling point of hydrogen chloride and hydrogen bromide are negative 85 degrees Celsius and negative 66 degrees Celsius. Identify the difference in their... Uh, identify the difference with their boiling point. Okay. Hydrogen chloride molecule are smaller than hydrogen bromide. Okay. Cl dengan Br. Yes, correct. Hydrogen bond exists between hydrogen chloride molecule. So, this is wrong. Because hydrogen bond, dia cuma wujud di antara fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen dengan hydrogen saja. Okay. Jadi, chlorine tiada. Okay. And then, the HCl bind is weaker than HBr bond. So, salah lah. Okay. HBr bind lebih kuat. Eh? Bond ni lebih kuat daripada HBr bond. So, the answer is one only. Okay. Jawapan cuma satu sahaja. Okay, next. Arrange the C2H6, H3OH, NaCl and silicon in ascending order. Okay, identify the, sepatutnya this one, uh, sepatutnya uh, identify the explanation lah. Okay, and then choose the correct explanation. Okay, so, di sini dia letak CH3OH. Okay, CH3OH. C2, H6, NaCl, Si yang paling tinggi. So, dekat sini salah. Eh? Sepatutnya C2, H6 ini dia dekat sebelah kiri. And then, sebab dia ada hydrogen bond. C, H3, OH has the lowest melting point. Salah. Okay. Statement pertama salah. C2, H6 less than C, H3, OH less than NaCl less than silicon. Okay. So, susunan ini dah betul. Tapi, explanation dia. Silicon has metallic structure. Salah. Silicon is giant covalent structure. So, this is not the answer. So, this one wrong. C2H6 less than CH3OH less than NaCl less than silicon. So, this one sama atas bawah. Jadi, C2H6 has only weak one wall forces between its molecule. Thus, it has the lowest melting point. This is correct. Okay. NaCl has the highest melting point because it is ionic. Okay. Ionic compound and form electrostatic force. Okay. Ini salah lah. Sebab sepatutnya silikon paling tinggi and then yang ini pun sepatutnya metanol lebih tinggi daripada uh, C2H6. Okay. So, the answer is 2 sahaja. Sorry. Uh, 3 sahaja. Eh? Tapi dalam Google Form saya dah betulkan. Ada jawapan 3 only. Okay. Alright. Next question, 21. 21 minus 3, 18. Okay, question 18. For each of the molecule given, okay, PCL3, PCL5, and POCL3 justify the molecular geometry and its polarity of the molecule. Okay, PCL3 tetrahedral. Salah. Okay, PCL3 is trigonal pyramidal. Okay, phosphorus, 1, 2, 3. PCL3 
okay. Yang tetragonal piramidal. Okay, and then PCL5 trigonal bipyramidal shape. This one correct. Yang ini pun correct. Tapi yang dia salah dekat sini adalah PCL3. Sebab PCL3 ni salah. Jadi A salah. Okay, yang ini pun salah. Dia kata tetrahedral salah. B salah. Okay, tengok C. Trigonal pyramidal shape. Okay, betul. Trigonal bipyramidal shape. Okay, betul juga PCL5. POCL3 tetrahedral. Yes, correct. Jadi, the answer is C. Okay, alright. PCL5 is PCL5. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. PCL5. Okay. And then, AB5. Okay, POCL3. Okay. POCL3. Okay. Tetrahedral. Okay, so this one is double bond O, CL, CL, CL. Okay, AB, AB4, tetrahedral. Okay, alright. So the correct answer is C. Next. Which among the structure of SO2 is the most plausible structure? Explain. Jadi, di antara tiga ni, yang mana yang paling plausible? Struktur yang paling plausible. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Okay, so the answer is, kita kira formal charge for each molecule. Okay, formal charge dia, zero, zero, zero. Okay, kira lah ni, enam tolak enam, enam tolak enam, enam tolak enam. So, semua zero. Then, two, enam tolak satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh. Enam tolak tujuh, negatif satu, enam tolak... 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Positif 1, 6, 3, 6, 0 So this one is 6 minus 7 Negative 1 6 minus 5 6 minus 4, positive 2 Okay 6 minus uh, 5, positive 1 Okay So yang ini negative 1 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Okay, 6 minus 7, negative 1 6 minus 6, 0 6 minus 7, negative 1 Jadi kita dapat Satu one lah yang paling plausible. Sebab apa? Sebab semua dia punya formal charge adalah zero. Okay, this structure one is because it has the lowest formal charge. Okay, alright. Okay, question dua puluh. Okay, another ten question. Determine the molar mass of chloroform gas if a sample weighing 0.389 grams is collected in a flask with a volume of 102 milliliter at 97 degrees Celsius. The pressure of chloroform is uh, 7 to 8 millimeter mercury. Okay, 7 to 8 millimeter mercury ini merupakan uh, pressure di dalam uh, apa tu? Millimeter mercury kena tukar pergi atm. So kita divide by 760, kita dapat 0.957 atm. Lepas tu gunakan PV NRT, PV is equal to NRT, KN is equal to mass of MR, RT, MR is equal to MRT over PV, subsidy all the way value, so kita dapat 0 0.389, 0 0.0806 times 370, so this one don't forget to convert kepada Kelvin, eh? uh, temperature must be in Kelvin. Okay, because unit for R is liter, ATM, per mole, per Kelvin. And then this one is liter. Okay, this one pressure di dalam ATM. And then, 0 0.102 liter. Okay, so this one is, wait, eh? sorry, this one is mass. Eh? Mass is in gram. Okay, so liter cancel with liter ATM cancel with ATM Kelvin Kelvin so tinggal gram per mol ok so the answer is 1 to 1 gram per mol C alright so question 21 0.82 mol of hydrogen gas has a volume of 2 liter at certain temperature and pressure what is the volume of 0.125 mol of this gas at the same temperature and pressure 
Jadi kalau constant temperature dan pressure yang berubah adalah volume dan number of mole. So this one kita gunakan Evo Evogadro's law. Okay, jadi Evogadro's law. Okay, N1 over V1 equal to N2 over V2. So number of mole over volume. Number of mol over volume. Kita nak cari volume 2. Jadi volume 2 kita dapat 0.305 liter. Okay, so the answer is donkey D. Next. Okay, a mixture of three gases has the total pressure of 1,380 millimeter mercury at 298 Kelvin. So this one adalah pressure. Okay, this one adalah temperature. Okay, the mixture is analyzed and is found to contain 1.27 mol of carbon dioxide, 3.04 mol of carbon, and 1.5 mol of argon. Okay, so kita kena gunakan Dalton's law. This one, ah, huh? Dalton's law of partial pressure. Okay, jadi pressure of argon equal to number of mol fraction, ah. Huh? Mole fraction times P total. The P total kita tadi, okay, 1,380 millimeter mercury, 1.5 over n total. Jadi n total ni kita tambah je lah, 3 tadi. Okay, so kita dapat 0.356.282 millimeter mercury. Tukar pergi uh, ATM divided by 760, so kita dapat 0.469 ATM. Jadi jawapan dia adalah B. Okay, question 23. Consider the equilibrium reaction NaN2O4 okay, N2O4 produce 2NO2 which of the following correctly describe the relationship between KC and KP of the reaction. Okay, so the answer is Kp is equal to KCRT delta N. Delta N kita sama dengan 2 minus 1, positive 1. So, Kp is equal to KCRT power of 1. Jadi, kita dapat the answer is C. Okay. Alright. 24. Okay. So, soalan 24. Okay, 2.5 mol of NOCl was placed in a 2.5 liter reaction vessel at 400 degree Celsius. After the equilibrium was established, it was found that 28% of the NOCl has dissociated. Okay, jadi bermula sekali kita kena kira bilangan, uh, kita kena kira apa? Concentration. Jadi concentration initial dia 2.5 of 2.5 liter, so kita dapat 1 molar. The 1 molar. Okay, dia punya change dia adalah sebanyak 28%. Jadi, 28% ni merupakan uh, apa, uh, perubahan dia. Okay, jadi uh, 28% is degree of dissociation. Okay, jadi X over C initial. 2X, eh? so this one minus 2X over 1. Okay, so kita dapat 0.14 di sini. Okay, so kita tinggal 0.72. Okay, sorry, sorry, this one, uh, 0 0.72 eh, di sini, and then, this one, X kita dapat uh, 0 0.14, jadi 2X is 0 0.28, 0 0.14, okay, so kita dah dapat dia punya molarity at equilibrium, gantikan dekat dalam KC, okay, KC is concentration chlorine, product over reactant, NO2, jangan lupa kuasa 2, so, di sini perkali dia kuasa 2 bahagi dengan NOCl square. Okay. NOCl is 0 0.28. Okay. 0 0.14 times, oh sorry, this one is 0 0.28. Eh? This one 0 0.28, 0 0.72. Okay. Square. Okay, so kita dapat 0 0.0211. Jadi jawapan dia adalah D. Okay, and then next soalan 25. Okay, by using Lichtenstein principle, explain the shift in equilibrium position of the above reaction if an inert gas is added at constant pressure. Okay, 
So, in a gas at constant pressure, okay. Okay, in a gas at constant pressure, dia tidak uh, kalau constant pressure by adding in a gas at constant pressure, partial volume will increases and pressure will drop. Thus, equilibrium will shift to the position with higher number of mole. Jadi, higher number of mole kita dekat sini adalah di sebelah kanan. Jadi, dia akan shift to the right. Jadi, bila dia shift to the right, okay, bila dia shift to the right, okay, dia akan pergi uh, pilih B lah. Alright. Jadi, jawapan dia adalah 28, eh, sorry, 25 adalah B. Shift to the right. Okay, the strength of weak acid are usually weak acid are usually compared by using their okay acid dissociation constant. Okay, jadi jawapan dia adalah B. Okay, jadi jawapan dia B. Dapat enam. Sikit lagi. <coughs> okay, so the pH of weak monoprotic acid is for if its concentration is 0.01 mol. What is the pKa value for this acid? Jadi sekarang dia nak cari pKa. Jadi mula-mula sekali daripada nilai pH ni, kita tukar pergi concentration of H+. Okey, kalau daripada kita construct a ice and ice table, okey dalam ice table kita, HA produce H+ dan A-. Okey. Jadi 0.0100. Jadi this one minus x plus x plus x. Jadi kalau concentration H plus kat sini sama dengan okay, x. Jadi kita ambil 1 exponent negative 4. Jadi kita substitute je x tadi. x square over 0.01 minus x. Okay. x darab x over 0.01 minus x. Jadi bila kita gantikan kita dapat nilai ka sama dengan Okay, the Ka value 1 exponent negative 6. Jadi, dia nak cari pKa. Jadi, negative log Ka. Negative log 1 exponent negative 6. Kita dapat 5.99 ataupun uh, 9, uh, 6. Eh? 6 pH. Jadi, jawapan dia donkey. Okay, so sikit lagi. 28. The temperature at temperature 25 degree Celsius. Okay, the degree of dissociation of 0.202 molar hydrazine solution is 0.69%. What is the value of ionization constant? Kb. Jadi, dia suruh cari Kb kat sini. Jadi, kalau Kb, okay, Kb kat sini kita dapat, okay, uh, dia punya dissociation constant, eh, hydrazine. Okay, so, dia punya equation dulu lah. Okay, nanti you... Just one deal. Macam mana kita dapat equation ni? Okay. Kita punya equation adalah N2H4 plus H2O okay, liquid produce N2H5 plus tambah OH minus. Jadi N2H5 plus okay, darab OH minus bagi N2H4. Okay, H2O kita tak masuk. Jadi, inilah equation daripada dissociation untuk uh, hydrazine. Okay, so it is equal to uh, X darab X over 0 0.02 minus X. Jadi, X kita kat sini, okay, kita dapat daripada alpha. Alpha sama dengan X over C initial. Jadi, alpha dia bagi 0.69%. Jadi, X over 0 0.02 darab 100% kita dapat X sama dengan 1.38 eksponen negatif 4 jadi X kita substitute dekat dalam X square over 0.02 minus X kita dapat 9.58 eksponen negatif 7 jadi jawapan dia adalah A ok so question 32 the pH of a buffer system containing 1 molar ok Acetic acid and one molar of sodium ethanoid is 4.91. Jadi ini adalah the value of pH. Calculate the pH after addition of 0.1 mol of gases HCl to 1 liter of the solution assuming the volume does not change. Okay, volume tak change lah because kita masukkan gas dekat sini. Okay, sangat sedikit lah. Okay, kita cuma masukkan 1 mol of 1 to 1 liter of the solution. Jadi, dia punya molarity is 0.1 molar. Okay, 0.1 molar. 
Okay, so 0.1 over 1 sama dengan 1 molar. Okay, SCL is added. Yang kita masukkan SCL tadi, dia akan neutralize menggunakan conjugate base CH3COO- Jadi, CH3COO- tambah H3O+, produce CH3COOH plus H2O Jadi, dia punya concentration initial dia adalah 1 molar Okay, initially dekat sini kita bagi 1 molar Okay, so dia memang dah ada 0.1 molar Okay Then this one, sorry uh, This one is 1.0 okey HTO plus 1.0 jadi change dia minus 0.1 minus 0.1 minus plus 0.1 jadi at the end of the equation dia tinggal kosong kat sini so this one yang tinggal adalah sodium etanoid okey etanoid ion dan juga etanoid acid jadi kita masukkan dekat dalam pH is equal to pKa plus log concentration salt jadi salt kita 0.9 okey and then weak acid kita adalah 1.1. Jadi bila kita kira kita dapat 4.65. Okay, so the answer is D. Okay, last question. Okay, soalan terakhir. Calculate the solubility of magnesium phosphate in gram per liter. Jadi dia bagi KSP 5.2. Okay, eksponen negatif 24. MgPO4. Okay, 2.62 gram per mol. Jadi mula-mula sekali kita kena kira dia punya apa? KSP. Okey, kita tulis equation untuk KSP. KSP sama dengan Mg2 plus kuasa 3 darab P of 4 3 minus kuasa 2. Okey, sebab uh, perkali dia adalah 3 perkali P of 4 2. Jadi 3x cube okey 2x square. Okey, and then kita dapat 100x kuasa 5. Okey. Then, equal to KSP 5.2 eksponen negatif 24. Jadi, kita dapat X is equal to 8.64 eksponen negatif 6 molar. Jadi, daripada nilai X di sini, kita nak tukar pergi solubility di dalam gram per liter. Jadi, kita darabkan dengan molar mass. 262 gram per mol. So, kita dapat 2.26 eksponen negatif 3 gram per liter. Jadi jawapan dia adalah A. Okay, so that's all for our discussion in revision 2. Thank you class.